Hello and you are very welcome back to the National Aquatic Centre here in Dublin for the final game of this Home Nations Tournament, Ireland and Wales. And both sides are about to be presented to the crowd here and then we will have the playing of the national anthems followed by the final game of this tournament. So, Ireland and Wales for the final time this weekend will be coming out from our left-hand side to what is now a good crowd here in the National Aquatic Centre following the victory of the Irish women earlier on in the Home Nations Tournament. So, just to recap, England have been crowned Home Nations champion in the men's section following a good victory over Scotland in the first of our two men's games. And Ireland and Wales were just running slightly behind the game due to start at 2 o'clock, but the presentation just now happening. So our tournament director, Keith Lynch, has gone over to make sure that everything is ready for the teams to come out from behind the curtain. And as I say, we will have full live coverage of Ireland and Wales after the presentation and the playing of the national anthems. Do join us for live commentary then. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome to the final match of the 2023 Women's and Men's Home Nations Tournament. Our final match of the competition will be between Wales wearing white caps and Ireland wearing green caps. Number 11 and captain, Adam Jarrett. One, Ewan Edwards. Two, Matthew Griffiths. Three, Joseph Jenkins Delph. Four, Henry Davis. Five, Lewis Gilmore. Six, Ollie Chilcott. Seven, Toby Chilcott. Eight, Jack Montgomery. Nine, Lloyd Pittick. Ten, Ewan Carter. Twelve, Matthew Kelly. Thirteen, Jacob Owen Edwards. Head coach, Mike Davis. Team manager, Mark Gilmore. In green caps, from Ireland, eight, Captain Owen Bridgman. One, Owen Doyle. Two, Mark Moran. Three, Kieran Walsh. Four, Connor Johnston. Five, Matthew Hines. Six, Adam Caulfield. Seven, Stefan McMahon. Nine, Adrian Hanna. Ten, Max Connolly. Eleven, Aidan Mullaney. Twelve, Killian Colvin. Thirteen, Shane O'Brien. Fourteen, James Reid. Fifteen, Tiernan Colvin. Head coach, Goran Sablik. Team manager, Eamon Caulfield. Our referees for this match, Mr. Connor Jukes from England, Mr. Paul Metcalf from Scotland, delegate, Mr. Stephen O'Brien from Ireland. Please be upstanding for the Welsh national anthem.
Hello there and welcome back for the final time for our very last game of the weekend. Ireland and England here in the... Ireland? Wales, sorry, I beg your pardon. Tiredness setting in now in the very final game of this home nations tournament. We've had a cracking weekend and Mick O'Kane, I'm slightly distracted because I can see lots of Apache pizza down to my right hand side and <laughs> wouldn't a slice of margarita be nice? At this time of the day. Well, you can speak for yourself there, Kieran, but I am focused on one thing and one thing only, and that is this last game between Ireland and Wales. The sign of a real water polo player, always tuned in, ready for action. You might learn from the best here, With Kieran. respect, Mick, you're only after eating, so that's why you're fully concentrated. Wales coming from right to left in this opening quarter. Ireland from left to right. Ireland in the green hat. And, Mick, it will be an interesting game. Absolutely, and straight away into the action that man again Killian Colvin one of the fastest players it would it would be fair to say not just for Ireland but in this entire tournament yeah we've got a really good crowd come in here for this last game and we've been treated to 11 fantastic games so far in this tournament across both codes yeah we have and I expect nothing less from this game here between Ireland and Wales Ireland um, having had a strong win um, against Scotland and then uh, narrowly losing to England so they'll want to put on a good show for their large fans here and then Wales too will also want to finish up with a strong performance so exciting water polo ahead early doors it's Wales who are making the chances in the Irish six meter line and a chance good deflection over the bar the deflection coming there from the hand of Max Conley. One of the men we spoke with earlier on. And Max really enjoying working under the current coach, Goran Zablic. And he was saying to us that he's had Goran the whole way up. So, a real benefit to his technical game. Oh, what a pass that was. And there's a chance on here for Killian Colvin. Good save. Really well beaten down. But it was a really good pass there from Owen Bridgman to set Colvin on his way. But Iwan Edwards, the Welsh number one, more than equal to that one. Yeah, and Shane O'Brien between the six this afternoon. Uh, Owen Doyle being rested here. So Shane O'Brien, a very, very competent goalkeeper. A St. Vincent's man. I've seen a lot of success as, it, as all of his Vincent's teammates did last weekend at the Arsenal Cup. Yeah. Oh! Proving his value just there. Really top, good fingertip. Yeah, absolutely. Joseph Jenkins Delft looking for his fifth goal of the tournament. And Ireland... Survive an early scare inside the first minute and 40 seconds. So it's a steal. A chance for Ireland. And stiff on McMahon. A good save again from Iwan Edwards in the Welsh goal. Yeah, and welcome to some of my North Dublin club colleagues sitting over there. In the, we have a large attendance here this afternoon from many clubs, Kieran. Yeah, it's great to see it and a great crowd here for this last game. Another good save from O'Brien. The Vincent's man, good save that time from... I can also see my coach in academy, Annie McMahon, Paul McMahon, Finn on, Connor McMahon, all over there, the McMenimums. So Ireland now with Stefan McMahon down on the stand side and Stefan just trying to orchestrate something and he's gone for the back stick to Mal Caulfield and Caulfield just trying to work it back and he has worked it really well and there's a, an infringement on Max Conley. Hines getting Sorry, the on Matthew exclusion. Hines. Back for Bridgman now and Killian Colvin if he wants him. It's back for Caulfield. Caulfield. And Caulfield working with that left hand back as far as Bridgman. Bridgman trying to wind up the shot. Gives it back to Caulfield and Wales marshalling it well. And Bridgman has it again with seven seconds left in the shot clock. Just decided to pop it out to McMahon. McMahon takes the effort. But it was a good defensive block there from and Adam Jarrett. Again, Kieran, I mean, last night we saw it in Ireland, England on the six on five being clinical making the use of that extra man and you know Ireland would want to improve on that in this game and there was one to remedy that and it just went away for them yep Wales trying to build now with Matthew Kelly the referee has decided to exclude the bewildered Adam Caulfield but meanwhile Wales have taken full advantage of that Joseph Jenkins and it's punishing Joseph Ireland Joseph Jenkins dealt with the goal and that's his fifth of the tournament Mick Yep, and the young man from the Welsh Wanderers has captained Wales at junior level, represented Great Britain at junior level, at the European qualifiers, and first represented the Welsh senior team at the age of 15. So he is, he is one serious operator. 
Joseph Jenkins, Delft, Welsh Wanderers. 1-0 Wales. Ireland have it again now with um, Mark Moran. And Moran just trying to find the right option. Gives it short here to Caulfield. And Moran goes again for him. Can Caulfield find him? Caulfield has hit it that little bit too far. But McMahon reacts and does well. McMahon! Oh, bump, 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 bump. Who else but Steele McMahon? The fantastic 35-year-old from Cahobrua. Left side driver. And he put it away with a plump. Yeah, lovely little delicate finish to the back of the Welsh net. Good recovery from Ireland. Matthew Hines out, taking a rest. Spoke with Matthew earlier on, was really enjoying the tournament and the competition that they've been exposed to this weekend and yeah. was seeing the value of it. Yeah, and Kieran Walsh has taken his place. So good to see the younger Matthew Hines and Kieran Walsh there both representing Ireland and certainly uh, they're all enjoying they have enjoyed a wonderful tournament Wales now just trying to take all the right options and they've worked it back with Lloyd Pittick and you could hear the shouts coming in from the Welsh bench to move the ball because the shot clock was running down good defence from Ireland Shane O'Brien Adam Caulfield in Caulfield. the more central areas Connor Moran Johnson on the far side his car up teammate Caulfield himself Moran oh. driving. Caulfield setting him away and a chance on here Lagging now for Ireland for a 2-1. Was there a foul? I think there might have been and it was indeed Moran who was fouled out for McMahon. McMahon has Colvin to his right if he wants him. Doesn't. Goes for Caulfield on the far side and Colvin is still presenting as his Bridgman. It's Colvin who gets it. Gives it across to McMahon. Winds it up. Passes it back to Caulfield. Chance. Oh! Both centre forward postman missing it. Oh! Yeah, Mark Moran. Mark Moran and his teammate Kieran Walsh both the Carib men just unfortunate not getting a hand to that one yeah really close and really good move from Ireland so Wales now just driving forward there and it was Ollie Chilcott being tracked by Stefan McMahon and across now to Joseph Jenkins Delft back out here for Owen Carter Wales are more than happy just to try and pull this Irish defence but Ireland are being quite disciplined Oh, but that doesn't matter. Super hit into the back of the net. And Joseph Jenkins, Delph, can't actually believe that's been disallowed. Owen, Owen Bridgman's been sent to the corner as well, Kieran. Yeah, so Bridgman and McMahon both out of the action. I think Ireland will be happy enough not to have gone Ooh, down a goal. Two-player advantage here for Wales. Trying to work it round and get it back out to the areas with lots of space. Oh, nearly really good save from Shane O'Brien. It was nearly intercepted that time, Mick. Yeah, and Caulfield's away down that, down that oh. right-hand side. He's got the ball. Second time of asking. He got it here. Caulfield trying to get the lead for Ireland. He has help inside if he wants it. He has more help at the back stick, and that's where he's gone. But it's easily enough dealt with the Welsh. But Moran has it second time of asking, and... Ireland nice steal by the, uh, the Welshman Lloyd Pittock there in the middle. Yeah, here's James Reid, and James just threw the ball away because he knew the shot clock and was And again, up. that bit of work from Lloyd Pittock. You might not know, but he reached up high to intercept that and helped his team to get back possession. Well done, Lloyd Pittock, Welsh Wanderers. And Killian Colvin has to defend here, but did so illegally on his... Uh, Opposing number 12, Matthew Kelly. Kelly now trying to get inside O'Brien. And good two-handed save from O'Brien there. No problem to O'Brien. Yeah, Matthew Kelly, the Welsh Wanderers wing. He thought he had that. But um, Shane O'Brien was up to the challenge. All right, here's James Reid. And back into the fray for Ireland is Aidan Milani. And it's out on the far Let's side see. here with Connor Johnson. Let's see what James Reid can do now that he's in the water. Oh, looked to be a clear hold of the hand there. Absolutely. Oh. It was Kieran Walsh's hand that was being held. Clever play by Kieran Walsh. Again, showing the importance of being able to fight for that ball in that centre position. And he's won a penalty. And yeah. up steps my teammate and colleague coaching on the coaching team, international James Reid. Good finish. Bomb, 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 bomb. James Reid with a lovely goal. 
to make it 2-1. So Reid with his first goal of the day and second of the tournament gives Ireland a 2-1 lead with 90 seconds to go in this first quarter. And Kieran Walsh is just coming out for a breather. As is Caulfield. As is Caulfield, yes, well spotted. Both, both well deserved. And in fact, Mark Moran coming out as well. The Kieran Walsh in consultation with the referee. It must have been in relation to the previous decision to award the penalty. Walsh and Moran out. That's three carb men out at the same time. Wouldn't see that that often. Really impressive. Well done, carb. Matthew Kelly turns it across now to Jack Montgomery. And Montgomery has found a really good pass inside to Joseph Jenkins. Delvin, you could see what he was trying to do with just that oh, bit of a twist. One of my favourite little shots that here where you just sort of give a spin to it and oh it's a really tough one for keepers to say but just didn't get it that time no absolutely but here is Max Conley and Max has sent James Reid on his way and he's options to his right if he wants them or decides to go himself he has gone right that is a lovely Irish goal there that was a really nice goal and there's a lot to that James Reid the North Dublin man to the Drogheda man Aidan Mulaney and very selfless James's girlfriend used to play for Drogheda but now plays for North Dublin. Say no more. Reid did very well. And squared it to Milani, who passed it into the empty net. Speaking of Milani, a wee bit too enthusiastic in the tackle there. And Wales had the ball inside the Irish half with about 40 seconds to go. And they're just going to try and work it here with Matthew Kelly. Kelly across now for Griffiths. And you can hear the sounds to move the ball a little bit quicker 30 seconds to go work Ireland O'Brien yeah trying to work O'Brien and they did work him but the crossbar came to the Irish rescue there and Aidan Milani's back into the fray we've swimmers gone through the middle here and Hines is back in Hines yeah absolutely and there's a chance now for Hines can he get onto this one he's beating his man well oh lovely oh. finish Bomb, 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 bomb. Matthew Hines, take a bow. Ah, great finish from Hines. Did really well to get away from the attentions of Matthew Kelly. And that's Matthew Hines' fifth goal of the tournament. And back out again for another rest. So, Goran Savage knows there's a long game ahead of him. And he is using the rotation really well. Yeah, Ireland 4-1 to the good here. Eight really clever coaching. Players in for an attack, recovery, utilising what he has in front of him. The key facet of the game for every coach of any side at any level, making sure you give players rest, recovery, really, really clever. All right, well, there is the end of the first quarter, and it's Ireland who lead 4-1. to one. We'll see you in a moment.
All right, the second quarter has begun as the first did. Killian Colvin winning the swim off, and James Reid has possession. And James Reid just swimming into the Welsh half and pops it out here to Aidan Milani. Milani being well confronted by the Welsh number two. That Welsh number two is Matthew Griffiths. Yeah, it's back good start for now. Ireland. That's Caulfield. Chance for Hines. Oh, great good save. Good save. So it'll be a corner to Ireland on this right-hand side. Yeah, good start for this second quarter for Ireland. Shout out to my colleague from North Dublin, Jamie Cope, goalkeeper, former Irish international. Now Stefan McMahon at the back stick, trying to work something, comes back to Milani. Good reach there. Got up real high to knock that one down, gives it across to James Reid, and Reid takes a shot. And Reid has found the net yet again. James Reid with his second of the game and his third in this tournament. And the North Dublin man, he's fine-tuned the shooting today. Yeah, I had a bit of a talk with him earlier, so seems to be paying off. Well done, James. Wales now attacking with Henry Davis. To his left, he has Joseph Jenkins Delf. And Delf is just in a little bit of space, but he's gone that little bit wider straight at Shade O'Brien. Came the shot from Matthew Griffiths, but it was a good move from Wales. And here could be a really good move from Ireland if Killian Colvin can grab it, and he can. He throws it ahead of him very cleverly. Chance on here again for Colvin. Is he being fouled? No, according to the referee, a really good steal from Henry Davis. And that looked like a certain Irish goal. Yeah, it was great defending. It has to be said by the, the City of Bristol man, Henry Davis. He's been playing water polo for nine years and is part of the BWPL team and also played for University of Nottingham first team. Captain of under-18 set west. Great steal by Henry Davis. Now here he is again. Davis outside now. Little pop pass inside from Matthew Griffith into the centre forward area. Another exclusion here. And Wales now have a man up situation and they're trying stretch this Irish defence Killian Colvin making good strides to get back into a defensive structure but Wales using good width in this attack and oh it was just wasn't tuned in there was Adam Jarrett but luckily enough for him oh chance no now Shane O'Brien sees it James Reid's away James Reid this could be a good move oh it's gone slightly behind him but he did well to turn around and pick it up but the chance might just be gone at this occasion but that was a good Irish move and Reid did eventually get a shot away but it was straight at Iwan Edwards. Oh, good effort by uh, the North Dublin man, James Reid. James is from Australia, Kieran. Has played uh, top level at water polo in Australia and is bringing that again to the Irish water polo setup. And here's Davis again. Oh, cheeky one. Shane O'Brien more than equal to that one. Seal McMahon away. Seal keep moving, keep them going. Yeah, and there's also a player in centrally here, is it? Matthew Hines, I think, is in the central area if McMahon wants. And McMahon does a lovely little pirouette and takes the shot, but a good save from Ian Edwards and puts it out for a corner. And he is irate. But the Welsh defence tell him that there was two men swimming in there and Ireland had men over if they wanted. Yeah, I mean, Ivan Edwards really saved his team there with a, like a top you know, save from close from Steele McMahon and is keeping his team in the game. Yeah, big time because 6-1 at this stage would have really given Ireland a nice cushion. There's a chance on here again for Hines. He did well to retain it there under the attention of three Welsh players, but the three Welsh players just do enough in the end and it's back in the hand of Iwan Edwards. And the Welsh number one now is trying to build on the right-hand side and he's trying to build through Adam Jarrett. And Jarrett has two swimmers centrally. One is Henry Davis. The other is Jack Montgomery, but he's decided to go for that back left diagonal ball. And chance for Wales to work something. Good attention there from Mark Moran on the Welsh number three, Joseph Jenkins Delft, but he did it illegally and eventually the shot came in. And no real danger for Shane O'Brien. But a good diagonal ball that time. Yeah, and, and again, there's, there's six outfield Welsh Wanderers playing out on the pitch now again, Kieran. So, you know, this Welsh Wanderers club must be some, some side, some club. There's so many players playing for their national side. 
So Max Conley and James Reid has it now, and it's Reid telling Conley to go forward, but he doesn't want to, he doesn't need oh, to. Oh, bum, 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 James Reid. He is having a fantastic final game here at the National Aquatic Centre. Wonderful goal, took it upon himself to stick it in the back of the net. So a hat-trick for Reid. A really good finish from the Aussie. So it'll be Wales to restart us. Trailing 6-1 here with just under four minutes to go in the second quarter of this final game live from the National Aquatic Centre in this home nations tournament. England have been crowned champions. This very much the battle for second place. Should Wales win, it would come down to score difference. If Ireland win, they will secure the second place spot. That is a fantastic save from Shane O'Brien. It sure was. And it was that young man, Toby Chilcott, the Welsh Wanderer, 17-year-old. And Shane O'Brien was up to the challenge to stop a, what looked like a great shot. Yeah. Back yeah. to Chilcott, 17 years of age, Dean. Kieran, at this level of water polo. Yeah, and Adrian Hanna now into the fray for Ireland, the Cahill Brewer man. And also clever by, by Toby Chilcott because he realised he needed to get back to, to nullify these counter swims from, from uh, Team Ireland. And there he is back working hard against Max Connolly of Sandy Cove. Fantastic play from Chilcott and Max Connolly trying to get the better of him. Here's Hannah for Bridgman. Turns it around the far side. Kieran Walsh playing centre forward. Back out here to Milani playing his point. Oh, good effort from Bridgman. I think Ireland will be fairly happy enough with this first half performance, Mick. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's what they would, would want to have seen. You know, go around wanting to, you know, pick up from last night. Fine performance last night against a very, very strong England side. And they're bringing that intensity to this match. And... They are playing better for me in the first half where in last night in the first quarter they were sluggish, they were slow, but they're looking way more tuned in in this first half. So Ireland now trying to work it with Hannah and Hannah with a really good ball around the corner, but the Irish player, Aidan Ed, Milani, was being fouled and there's an exclusion here, I think. Ireland have the extra player and trying to work something now with Max Conley. And pops it back now to Bridgman, back for Conley. And chance, oh, Adrian Hanna. Adrian Hanna literally pulsing the ball to the net with venom. Phenomenal from the Cahill Brew man. Really, mm. really great player. The one kind of player you want to have in close in those six and fives. And he delivered. Well done, Adrian Hanna, Cahill Brew. Fantastic stuff. And well done to Max Conley there, getting out, having a rest, Sandy Cove man. Great to see a Sandy Cove player in this Irish team. Really fantastic stuff. And that's Hannah's first goal of the tournament. So had a good weekend last weekend, named the team of the tournament at the Irish Senior Cup and gets a goal here today that extends the Irish lead 7-1. Yeah, and again, Goran really working his bench well, looking at his options, giving people players rest when they need them. Yeah, and as you've been saying all weekend, make that squad rotation is just imperative. Absolutely. So, uh, Mark Moore in the guilty Young party. Young Chilcott man again. Toby, 17-year-old. Been really impressed by him, I have to say. Very, very good young player. Yeah, and I suppose something too, Mick, that we've really noticed with Ireland after the first quarter last night against England and now in this game is... They're really good in defence and making the, mis the opposition make the mistake to run down the shot clock. Yeah, and England found that last night. They, you know, they said they found it hard to break Ireland down. Um, so, you know, testament to the defensive activity. Oh, nice little effort there from Kiro Moss, which is just hitting the crossbar. Yeah, I don't know how Yogi, he won that, but Yogi really Yogi Bear, good. as we like to call him, the man from Corrib. Big, strong Yogi Bear, Kiro Moss. Good block down. Was it Adam Caulfield blocked that one down from Chilcott? And Shane O'Brien now just scanning the pool to see what the best possible option is. We're inside the final minute of this second quarter. 
And the ball has been played out to Connor Johnson, or CJ as they like to call him, in for Walsh again. And Walsh did well to get there ahead of Iwan Edwards, but he didn't do it within the rules. So Wales coming out with the ball with their number one. It's good to see the Irish women's team over in the stand supporting after their fantastic victory earlier on. Yeah, congratulations to the Ireland ladies team. Brilliant performance. Well done again. All around mighty, mighty performance. Connor Johnson picks it up and just pops it back to Shane O'Brien and Caulfield has it and there in fact goes the full time well, half time whistle I should say and we have a good game on our hands here Ireland leading 7-1 Pull the tickets. And you're very welcome back. So very interesting and halftime raffle has just taken place. And I can see the very special talent it is. Kira Frankie is just coming into our right-hand side here. So after a fantastic tournament, MVP in back-to-back -back weekends, Mick. Yeah, and I was talking to Kira Frankie's dad, Randy um, Frankie. He has played a high level in America, is coaching in America. So it's quite clear... Um, Kira is steeped in fine water pole tradition in, in her family. Great to see her parents here as well supporting her. Yeah, absolutely. All the way from San Diego. Beautiful city on the west coast of America. And of course, speaking of San Diego, the Irish uh, ladies goalkeeper Amelia Uri is on her way to San Diego, a full scholarship. Speaking of goalkeepers, there's a really good ball from Shane O'Brien to set Killian Colvin away, and as quick as he got it, he gives it back to Matthew Hines, and Hines swimming in one-on-one -on -one with Ewan Edwards. This would be a chance for Ireland. Oh, no doubt of it. No doubt of it in my mind about Matthew Hines not putting that one away. Absolutely lethal in one-on-one. -on -one. Two and for Matthew. Go. Six for the tournament. Eight for Ireland. They'll be very pleased with how they've 
come back out today and responded. They will indeed, Kieran. You know, it's uh, it's testament to the team, to the management, the entire group to put on a performance like this after what must have been a gut-wrenching defeat last night against England. Well, this Irish team now have 30 goals across their three games. Not a bad return. Oh, that's great play. Oh, that was fantastic play from Joseph Jenkins Delphan. Somehow, he didn't stick it away. Caulfield, Connolly, finds Connolly, and Connolly just trying to pop it into that central forward area to Matthew Hines, and I think Hines was he being fouled, Steve Vaughan McMahon. Oh, classic Steve McMahon goal, from that type of range he was never ever going to miss, low and hard, bottom corner, 8-1 Ireland. Yeah, and I think it was Ollie Chilcock got the exclusion there. So he's back into the action now. Matthew Hines out again for a little rest. Yeah, Hines will be happy with his day's work. Two goals so far. So, Wales just trying to now respond. And respond they did, but that was an absolutely excellent save by Shane O'Brien. Yeah, really nice save from a top, top goalkeeper. This St. Vincent's man. Wales take the corner and try and work something and work it they did. And that was a really good finish there from the Welsh number two, Matthew Griffiths. That's his fourth goal of the tournament, Mick. Yeah, brilliant from the Welsh Wanderers, 22-year-old. Uh, has been playing water polo since the age of eight, uh, with Welsh Wanderers since the age of 10. Made his senior debut at age 17 and multiple tournaments with Wales seniors, including home nations in Coventry, EU nations and club nations. Well done, Matthew. Great goal. So James Reid just getting a little bit of attention there from Lewis Gilmore. And Ireland retaining the ball and trying to work something now through Aidan Milani. And the referee, as he put another Welsh player out of the pool. In fact, we have a timeout here. Yeah, and that's, um, it was very classic Carl Brewer down this left side. When you have players like Adrian Hanna, Steele McMahon to face up against, you're guaranteed for a very strong tussle and... Both of those men ensued in getting an exclusion with Wales. Hard men to, to defend against. Trust yeah, me. Absolutely. I've been in that situation, Kerr. Oh, I trust you, Mick. Tough, but fair. So Ireland now just getting instructions as to how best to use this man-up situation. Yeah, really impressed with James Reid, I have to say, this afternoon. He's... He's come good with the type of performance we know is in him. So fantastic goals, fantastic play. So well done, James. You're really, really showing your caliber of water polo there this afternoon. Great to see. We know why you're in that squad. Brilliant, brilliant play. So we've just under six minutes to go here in this third quarter. And it's Owen Bridgman for Stefan McMahon. Back for Bridgman. Across now to Caulfield. And Dangerous back man with the left Bridgman. hand. Oh, oh, that was nearly a really good move from Ireland. Yeah, and listen, Jordan Elliott of, of the Eng England team was talking about how dangerous Ireland are in those quick balls around the D, hitting the two men, the post, and they work so hard to nullify that. And, you know, they, they know Ireland have a very good 6 5 when it gets going. Yeah, and that was a really good ball, a diagonal one. I think we've christened that one the. Colvin Frankie, but it just wasn't successful for Wales on that occasion. But they have the ball again, and they're attacking now through Matthew Kelly. And the shot blazed in there from Matthew Griffiths, but no real danger to Shane O'Brien. Now O'Brien setting a long one away, trying to get Caulfield going, and he is a man inside him if he wants him. But Wales have done really well to win it back, and they've set 
Joseph Jenkins dealt away. Granted, it wasn't just the best of passes. He did well to get the shot away before Bridgman got to him. Oh, I was unlucky. Just the pass was a little bit wayward and made it a little bit more difficult for the young man from Welsh Wanderers. So another infringement there. Lewis Gilmore. Going to the corner. Hannah Where do you see this for a shot? Wind one up. When Hannah, Hannah winds it up. Oh, good block down there by Griffiths. Uh, if, if I'd have been steel, it would have been popped into his teammate there. The, the danger man, Adrian Hannah. Really clever piece of play there from the Welsh bench, Mick. It was Lewis Gilmore who got the exclusion, but instead of him taking the rest and coming back in, the management just changed it and Jack Montgomery did the time in the in the bin and now he's into the action. Yep, clever, clever rotation, has to be said. So Ireland attacking down this right hand side and has come in sentient to Stefan McMahon. Mcmahon gives it across to his club mate Hannah. Hannah trying to make some ground. And takes a shot. Oh, oh what a that's goal. That's exactly what I was talking about. Bomb, 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 bomb. Azo Hanna picked that one out. He is so dangerous when he gets to wind one up and he shoots it like that. They are unstoppable. Really good interplay between the two. Cahal Brewerman. And it ended up in the top right-hand corner of Iron Edwards' net. So Ireland will be very happy. 10-2 in front. Less than four minutes to go in this third quarter. Yeah, and look, you, know, you see Matthew Hines and Adrian Hanna, Steel McMahon walking down there together. You know, both, both of those teams in the cup final last weekend, the Irish Senior Cup, and here they are as teammates. Fantastic to see, Kieran. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Connor Johnson fouling there, fouling Matthew Kelly, and Kelly trying to wind one up, and eventually has to square it across to his number eight, Jack Montgomery. Montgomery shot, took a deflection on the way through, and that took all the sting out of it. And it landed back with Shane O'Brien. And O'Brien has done really well to set Max Conley away. And Max Conley has Connor Johnson inside him if he wants. But he's swimming hard himself. Chance to get another one off the crossbar. And it will be Connor Johnson who reacts quickest here to pick up this loose ball. And he has options if he wants them or he can shoot himself. But he's decided to take one of those options. The option is Caulfield. And Caulfield has Milani. And Milani, what will he do? It gives it back out to Caulfield trying to wind one up left-handed. And a good effort, but it was blocked down and well dealt with there by Matthew Griffiths, who just turns around and gives it back to Iwan Edwards in the Welsh goal. And Wales have dealt with that period of possession quite well, and now they're trying to work it out themselves with yep. Matthew Kelly. And Wales Kelly now scanning well, the pitch, really good to the far side of the pitch. And Wales now coming down with Adam Jarrett on that far side, trying to drive left, but it's come across to Griffiths again. And Griffiths now in the central area, just popping one into the centre forward, but a really good flick from Milani and a good shot coming back oh, in great there save from, from Matthew Kelly, but it was saved well by Shane O'Brien. And O'Brien now has options beside him if he wants. And it's Caulfield. And Caulfield goes really long looking for Max Conley. And Conley's going to win that race. Bridgman is offering support here if he wants him. Bridgman gets it. And Bridgman, Bridgman now driving himself forward. Turns around and gives it out here. A good effort, a really good hand from Ian Edwards. Good effort to there. deny Aidan Milani. Well saved. So, timeout being called here with just two minutes left on the clock. Yeah, and a you know, really, really interesting match as we're seeing 10 2. I can see more of the North Dublin team over there. Jason Doyle, Alex, Zara, all enjoying the match. I can also see the McMenamums beside Jason Doyle. As usual, Paul McMenamum talking about the game, giving out, moaning, wondering. But great to see all the North Dublin people here and all the other clubs at the National Aquatic Centre. So the Welsh have called a timeout here, Mick, and the Irish players are more than happy just to stay into the pool, and they're not getting any instructions. They're happy enough with how they're playing. Ireland 10-2 to the good. We've got two minutes left on the clock. Wales trying to work this goal down to our right-hand side and maybe get a third just before we take the break for the end of the third quarter. Edwards has the ball. 
coming close was Lloyd Pittick, but he was picked up there by Kieran Walsh, and now they've got it out to Adam Jarrett, and he got up so high in the water as if he was standing, but being confronted there from Milani, and got it across, and Ireland did concede the, the foul on Owen Carter and a chance here. This would be a great Welsh goal if they get it, and they do. Oh, fantastic goal by that young man again, Joseph Jenkins, the Welsh Wanderers. Fantastic goal. Yeah, and that's well two done, goals Joseph. For Jenkins dealt today and six in the tournament so far. Another very impressive player. Absolutely. And, you know, it's been um, a sign of this Welsh side the entire three days of phenomenal intent, desire to improve, to get better. Gary O'Brien talked about it earlier. It's always about wanting to learn more, Dick Kieran. Yeah, absolutely. And Wales have done really well there to turn the ball over and Iwan Edwards demanding it so he can set up this next passage of play for Wales and it's with Ollie Chilcott and Chilcott has found his intended target. Oh, what a save from Shane O'Brien. Joseph Jenkins Delph got the ball from Adam Jarrett but O'Brien more than equal to it for Wales have it again and they have it with Lloyd Pittock and it comes out this side to Jarrett and Jarrett trying to put it across but really well read and really well intercepted there from Max Conley. One minute to go in this quarter and Shane O'Brien just popping it out there. And it's back in now for Owen Bridgman. Got it from Max Conley. And Bridgman looking for Caulfield with Walsh at centre forward. Johnson was on the left side there. Walsh has got away from his man and round the corner shot, but it was going high wide and no real threat to Ian Edwards. So we're inside the last 30 seconds here, Mick, and the message from the Irish bench will be probably keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's been one of those games for Ireland, a really solid performance all across the entire bunch of seven, the rotating players, the players that we have in now with likes of Aidan Mullally in there, Marshley and centre-back on this five on six, six on five, if you will. Yeah. Wales have the numerical advantage but they can't make a count because of the excellent Shane O'Brien and that should be that at the end of the third quarter it is Ireland who lead by 10 goals to 3 The final countdown with Mick O'Kane live from the National Aquatic Centre. Ireland and Wales. It's Ireland leading by 10 goals to 3 and looking to cement a second place finish here in the home nations. Yep, absolutely. Last quarter. It's, uh, it's, I can't believe we've, we've come to this final, final quarter after three brilliant days of water polo, Kieran. It really has been super to watch. been super to be alongside you. Um, Fascinating to look at the game in so many ways and see so many different styles of play. So it's been just thoroughly enjoyable, I have to say. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the feeling's very mutual. It was a great weekend's entertainment and great weekend's co-coms. And 
We've been treated to some absolutely splendid individual, collective displays, some unbelievable goalkeeping, some incredible assists and goal scoring and some really good tactical insight as well. Yeah, and, you know, uh, exactly. We talked about this an awful lot. Just prime example, Adam Caulfield, left sider on the right side. You know, and then, oh, what a goal. No words for that. I mean, just Matthew Hines, out of nothing, making a thunderous shot to make it 11-3. Yeah, a hat-trick for Matthew. And Ireland, well in control here. 11-3, 30 seconds gone in the fourth and final quarter. And, you know, this has been such a well-organised event. Ireland really putting their hand up to say, we can host this anytime you want. Yeah, you know, like, it, you know, by all accounts last year in Coventry, it was a phenomenal Four Nations, really well organised tournament facilities. And Ireland, you know, have brought that with their national aquatic facility here in Dublin. But they equally put, could have it in Limerick, or they could equally have it in Bangor. Across Ireland, Kieran. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we talk so much, make about players coming from across Ireland. So it's very important that we have great events and great stadiums and great facilities across Ireland too. Yeah, you know, and um, you know, with the teams we have in Belfast, Galway, Dublin, and the other place I've mentioned, like Athlone, Drogheda, uh, Ards, Bangor, Lisburn, really all these clubs are doing so much to make this game as strong as we can see it. And um, the future is bright. Um, I've seen and heard about the underage sides we have coming through and uh, there are some really really brilliant players who will be knocking on the door of this Irish men's team and the Irish women's team very very soon yeah well the more the merrier because the more options we have the better we will be going forward but going forward now are Wales and Ollie Chilcott oh what a lovely interception by Max Connolly yeah great again prime example of a young player coming through Kieran the Max Connolly Young man from Sandy Cove, um, the club, his club there, Colin Cray, is uh, the Stevie Doyle, the dad of Owen Doyle. Um, a lot of work done, Billy Kyo, uh, really brilliant people there at a, at a great, great club, Sandy Cove, and fantastic to see, see them represented by young Max Connolly here this afternoon. Yeah, and a really good ball out there from Shane O'Brien to find Stefan McMahon. He found Killian Colvin, and Colvin found the crossbar. Oh, Steel McMahon. Steel well, McMahon. Steel. You want to, if you will, fainting and just putting it over the keeper in a little cheeky lob. Fantastic. 12-3. And a wee hat-trick for McMahon. That brings him to five for the tournament. That was a lovely Irish move. Oh, it's fantastic. Fantastic play from some really classy players. So Mick, if I were to push you now, it's obviously been a fantastic couple of days, but to push you for your highlight of the weekend, what would it be? Kieran, you know, I think the simple answer to, to that would be the entire weekend. Um, I can't pick one out uh, in terms of what I've seen, but obviously the Irish ladies team winning the tournament outright um, has been a huge highlight. But for me, uh, also equally in terms of looking at um, parts of this tournament, it's been the younger players. The players from across Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, um, some of them as young as the 14-year-old from Dunfermline that was playing for Scotland, um, the 17-year-old young gentleman here, Theo, um, yeah, the, the young, brilliant um, young chap, Toby Chilcott. You know, so to see players like that coming through, it's, to me, what the game is all about. Yeah, and Matthew Griffiths just getting his second. It brings him to five for the tournament. The Welsh number two. So we're at 12 4. James Reid, oh, he's just getting a little bit too comfortable there with Lloyd Pittick, and Pittick got a hand to it, but Reid got it away a second time of asking Adrian Hanna with another rasper, but that was well saved by Edwards in the Welsh goal. And Wales just trying to work something now. 
through there, number 13, Jacob Owen Edwards. And they're inside again here, Wales. There could be another chance. Really good hands there from Shane O'Brien to deny Lloyd Pittock. And it was mopped up for him by Connor Johnson. Yeah, and look again, you know, to look at the Welsh side, you know, Ewan Edwards, Newport, the goalkeeper, has had a, a standing tournament. Matthew Griffiths, the Welsh Wanderers defender, uh, four to five. Joseph Jenkins, Welsh Wanderers. Henry Davis, City of Bristol. Just great play all round. Yeah, and there's Adrian Hanna. He's getting himself a hat trick. So, McMahon, Hines, and Hanna have all got hat tricks in this game. Yeah. Really, really strong performance by those players you have just mentioned. And Goran Sablic, you can see him then there on the bank, um, also cracking a smile, which wouldn't be that wouldn't be that typical of Goran. He only does it when he's happy with what he sees. So he's clearly happy with the result and the performance. So we have four minutes left here in this final game. And Wales have the possession in the Irish half, trying to just create something, maybe take a little bit of the bad luck off the scoreboard. Timeout being called here, I think, is there no play on from Wales? And Wales just working it around now, trying to find that really best option. Back with Griffiths. He'd be the man to hit the Irish net again. Wales just getting a little bit closer now to O'Brien's goal, and they're moving them from left to right. Oh. And nothing Adrian Hanna could do about that as Matthew Griffiths gets and his hat-trick. we were talking about a little bit, a little bit ago, Matthew Griffiths. Yeah, a good hat-trick from Griffiths. And you could just see the disappointment on Hannah's face because he did everything well, and then it just went in over his head. Absolutely. It was work, the work rate was solid, but Matthew Griffiths was determined to get another goal for Wales, and he's done just that. So when the action concludes here in about three and a half minutes' time, don't leave us. We will have the presentation of the MVP top goal scorer clean sheet award and of course the presentation of the trophies we know that England will be crowned champions in about three and a half minutes time but do stay with us here with HBV live for that presentation which will wrap up a really well run and organised and enjoyable tournament meanwhile Ireland have it just trying to add another one to their collection Adrian Hanna fouled. Another six on five. Yeah, and it's James Reid that has it back for Hanna. And Reid now just popping it centrally, and that was really unlucky. Kieran Walsh just a fingertip away. Just a little bit too high for Kieran. Big man, but not that big. Edwards for Jacob Owen Edwards. And he switches the play. And it's picked up at the second time of asking from Jenkins Delph. And he's getting away from the attentions of Adrian Hanna. But Hanna had to foul him. And it's Jenkins Delph again. Over it goes. And it's stuck in the net, dividing the small pool. And just behind the goal here to our right-hand side. The warm-down areas has been used. Two minutes to go. As Aidan Milani has it. And he's got a swimmer at the back right stick. It's Max Conley. Chance for Conley. There's a little bit too much length in the ball, but Connolly does well to get it back, and he's getting attention there from Henry Davis. Pops it inside, another chance for Ireland. Kieran Walsh. Good finish from Kieran. And that's his first goal today and his second goal of the tournament. He'll be happy with that one. Ireland have extended their lead, 14-5 in front now. And Mick, what are the merits of a round-robin tournament like this as opposed to a round-robin and then a final? Yeah, Kieran, you know, for a, get, a tournament like this to have four games, you know, one each against each side, it's a, it's a challenging one. And while I'm, while I'm on it, hello to Kim and Muriel. Wales again just trying to find something in a central area. They've decided to go wide and maybe drive down the left-hand side and Milani guilty of fouling and we're inside the last two minutes here Wales still have the possession of the ball and the faint of a shot was coming in and now it did come in it was a looping one there from Adam Jarrett looking to add another goal to his tally in the tournament and bring it from one to two but 
Shane O'Brien just got up, plucked it down and set Matthew Hines away. And Matthew Hines has given it out to Mark Moran. And Moran gives it inside to Milani. Milani tackled really well there from Ewan Carter. But Ireland are in again with Moran. Oh, a little chip shot. And Edwards just did enough to take the sting off it. But it was done illegally and Ireland have a penalty. They sure do, Kieran. At 14-5, this will be an interesting one. That man, Connor Johnson, St. Vincent's, and a little bouncer. So Connor Johnson, now based in Dublin, originally from the north, and Johnson with his first goal of the game, four in total, and a good finish. So Wales will take tip off again here. Ireland have extended their lead now. 15-5. The score we saw in the earlier game between England and Scotland. And Wales now just trying to, can they get one more before the end of the game? McMahon's back defending and it's come out centrally again to Davis. And Davis has gone wide. And oh, lovely little hand, lovely effort there. From Joseph Jenkins Delphin. And Once there goes again, that man, Connor Johnson. Shane O'Brien more Can than equal found? to it. James Reid now has the ball really style. deep. Gives it out to Mark Moran, and Moran has loads of swimmers ahead of him. Wales not committing everyone to defence. They're happy enough to leave one up there for James Reid to mark. Here is Mark Moran. Moran just trying to take on his man and maybe get a shot away, but he has been fouled there by Lewis Gilmore. And he gets it back out to Milani. Milani trying to wind one, does wind one, but that shot has been deflected out and it is wide. And we have a restart now from Ewan Edwards and Edwards trying to work something quick and to get the fastball up. But James Reid was a judge to have been fouling there and fouling Joseph Jenkins Delph. And Jenkins Delph now has the ball, takes a shot. Oh, what a chance that was there. Shane O'Brien just watched it as a speculative effort went over his head and out wide yeah it has to be said Kieran. in fairness James Reid has had a much better game this afternoon yeah he's been very impressive and a couple of great strikes from Reid absolutely well done to James Reid last attack for Ireland with Mark Moran and there goes the full time whistle on the final game that is that our sincere thank you to everyone who's viewed in from across Ireland Scotland Wales England across wider Europe and the world my thanks to Mick O'Kane on co-coms to all our behind-the-scenes staff here, to the staff of the National Aquatic Centre from Swim Ireland, from Ireland Water Polo, Gurmila Magwiv Galair. We hope you've had a wonderful time with us since Friday evening. Congratulations to England and to Ireland, Wales and Scotland for taking part. And as I say, for England being crowned champions this host home nations tournament, do stay with us for the presentation of their relative and respective awards. But from all of us here in the commentary team, Slán agus Iwa.